Hey kids, welcome to R and Kids, where we revive, renew, and restore me and you. Naomi's supposed to be here right now. Naomi. Hey, not nice. I'm so tired, man. Can you just be quiet? Tired from what? I just finished a long shift. Oh yeah, you have a job. That means you have money, right? Give me some. Come on, just a little. No! Come on, you love me, right? Yeah, but my money is for the things I need, and maybe some for God. Maybe a bit for me? No, you're money obsessed. I'm out of here. Uh, was that Naomi? Like, oh, hi kids. Um, she kind of looked upset. Like, what happened? Naomi's making a ton of money and isn't sharing. Hmm, would you like some advice? I'd rather get dollar bills. Well, we don't have dollar bills in Canada. You get what I mean. Well, I figured as much, but I think you should go on an adventure. Will I get paid? Knowledge is wealth. Oh man. Man, what a lazy brother. I work so hard and he expects me to give him all my money. <laughs> Sorry, I woke up with that bang. Hey, Naomi. I heard you got a new job. Congratulations. Hey, Oscar. Thanks. It's, it's a lot of work. Oh, so you want to quit? No, no. It's just very time consuming, you know? Why, you thought you didn't have to work hard to get money? Kinda. But, you know, you're upset with your brother about him just expecting money to come to him. Why would you be upset with him if you don't think you need to work a little bit hard for your own money? Well, you know, it's just lazy, you know? Lazy? Well, that reminds me of a story. Once upon a time, my great 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 grandpa Cletus. Cletus? Yeah, it's a very traditional word name. Yeah, anyway, back in the day, my ancestors were just lazing about. And then they looked at their neighbors, the ants, and started complaining because the ants always had food and we never had any. But don't you live in, like, what you eat? The dirt? Yeah, never mind. Anyway, my great 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 grandpa Cletus ended up listening to one of Solomon's proverbs. And he taught us all about it. Ah! I have more pros. Listen to this. Well, it's kind of hard to hmm. miss it. Like, let me find somewhere to write this down. Wait, um, which proverb are we at again? Well, I can't read my own handwriting. It's like chicken scratch. Anyway, um, yes, here we are. We're on the sixth chapter, the sixth verse. Hmm, yeah. Okay, write this. Hmm. Dear lazy person, go for a hike and watch the ants. Learn one or two from them. Oh, that's really wise, because like hiking is really good exercise. You get a lot of fresh air. Fresh air. I, wait, I didn't mean that. Hmm? Listen to me and write what I say. And look at the ants. They don't have anyone telling them what to do. I wish. Oh, what was that? Uh, nothing, go on. Okay, listen, listen carefully. The ants don't have anyone to tell them what to do. They store up all their foods in summer and keep it for winter. This is one reason they never lack. And those ants work very hard. Can I just like write, be like ants and like get it over with? Like I'm really bored. No, write everything. Listen to me carefully and write what I say. The next part, especially for you. How long will you stay lazy? Why are you always napping? Why do you avoid hard work? Are you trying to tell me something? Cause hmm. like I don't appreciate that. Like Keep writing. Oh, okay. This one, listen to this. Lazy person never prosper. And even the little they have end up losing. Speaking of prosper, aren't you the richest man around mm -hmm. here? I think you could give me some of your money. Yes. Sharing is caring. <sighs> This lazy generation. So, King Solomon is warning about being lazy and telling us if we want to be able to get what we want, like money, we have to work hard for it. Okay, so I have a new perspective. Working hard isn't such a bad thing. It just means I'm not lazy. Exactly. You'd make my great 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 <laughs> Gnarly. Three, go. Go to 
the entry, slugger go to the entry, slugger come. Center its wings and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler yet. It stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Gathers its food at harvest. Hey Matt, I'm guessing Pastor Sarah sent you over here to teach me about money. Money? Did you say money? <laughs> Matt, I don't think I've ever seen you this cheery before. Well, of course, I love money. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Let me guess, you want me to reason with her or earn it somehow? Earn it? Don't be silly. Just steal it. <laughs> Matt. Uh, oh, yeah, you got me thinking. She probably has all her money in a bank account or something, right? So, tell me, what does she love? Chase, her dog. Great. So, you kidnap Chase, and you hold him for ransom, and you don't give him back until she gives you all the money you want. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> what do you mean? You gotta get the money somehow, right? If you love something, you fight for it. If you love money, you're gonna fight for it. I've beaten up my brother for his lunch money. So violent. <laughs> That's not all. I've pickpocketed money from an old man. I stole my mom's jewelry. I literally took candy from a baby, and not even because she had money, just because I wanted to. <laughs> Maybe loving money isn't such a good thing. Who said? Listen, buddy, money makes the world go round. Money is power, and it's all anyone ever cares about. <laughs> Matt, God is the one with the power, not money. He's the one that makes the earth go around. I think you should care about him more. Nonsense! God can't buy me a hamburger. I gotta hustle. I get 16 different jobs while stealing from old ladies, all so that I can have so much money to buy 1,000 hamburgers. <laughs> I get that. God wants you to work. Like Naomi. You all love God more than money. What? 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 God, I love God more than money. You know what? God hasn't done anything for me. I can even ask this. What has God ever done for me? I've always had to work hard myself and make my own way. <laughs> you know money? God made that. You need to love God more than money. I completely and utter disagree. Also, look over there! No, Matt. I won't let you pickpocket. Fine. You left me no choice. Give me all your money or else. Or else what? Good question. I don't know. But anyway, just give me your money! Oh, it smells like sheep in here. That's a lot of wheat. Hello, dear one. I, the prophet Malachi, See that you are not robbing God, but giving everything unto Him, your very own substance. What? You are here to give God 10% of everything, no? Oh, 10%. Uh, oh. Why do you hesitate, young one? Don't you want your storehouses to be full? Don't you want the authority to rebuke over the devourer? I'll say it again. What? Huh? Fine. Listen, kid. God asks you to give 10% of everything you have back to Him. In Bible, Abraham didn't even have Bible back then, but he knew the principle of God. But 10% seems like a lot. Get to keep 90, kid. Does that feel better? I mean, not really. I worked hard for my money. I should be able to give to God like when I feel like it. Well, who blessed you in the first place with a healthy body and a strength to work in first place? Hmm? God? Right. You, it seems that you're able to eat three times a day, wear warm clothes, and stay in a peaceful environment. Thanks to who? God? Exactly. God doesn't need your money. 
you are just giving back to a little portion of what he gave to you in first place. So God gave me everything, so I should give him something? Yes, this is a command. You don't want to rob God, do you? No, of course not. Listen, 10% is the least that you can give it to God. I dream of a day when I can live off with just 10% and give the other 90 completely to God. Ouch. I'm not there yet, but if I remain faithful in my giving, God will pour out his blessing and fill our storehouses. That's nice. By being faithful in our tithe, we have the authority to rebuke the devourer. But you said that the first time, I still don't understand. You can act in God's power to make sure that you are not losing anything what God has blessed us with. Oh! Do you see this? Tithing is more of a benefit to you than to God. God already has everything. I see. You get the good stuff when you tithe God and you feel good that you are giving to God and building the kingdom of God. Oh, I understand, but can I give 5%? Oh, come on. 10% is the least that you can give it. And you can go on bigger as you grow. All right, all right, I'll start with 10. Hi kids, I just want to take a little bit of time to talk to you about the Word of God with a verse. And this verse comes from Matthew 6. In this verse, there are a bunch of people gathered around Jesus and he's telling them, don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about how you're going to clothe yourself. Isn't life more than just eating and wearing clothes? And be careful, don't fall into the trap of loving money more than loving God. And he says this, this is verse 33 of chapter 6. He says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things, all the things that you're worried about that have to do with money, <laughs> will be added unto you. So. Jesus is saying, all the things that we can have on this earth, that come second. If you put God first, like a magnet, those things will come and be attracted to you. But of course, you have to work hard for it. You can't get anything by being lazy all day. You can't get anything by just standing there. So I have a little way for you to remember. I heard this in a rap song once, it goes, work hard, God first. Work hard, God first. Work hard, God first. That's it. If you can remember, work hard, God first. Work hard, do what you need to do. Get that money, but put God first. <laughs> You'll be set and everything you need, that's promised to you. Okay, bye. Hey kids, welcome back. Today's episode is all about money. Because money is God's idea. God doesn't want us to love money, but he wants us to have money because then we can help to give to the churches all over the world, which is really important. So have you ever made a money box where you can save your money? That's what we're gonna do today. So you need some construction paper, some glue, some scissors, and you need a chip can with the lid on top, just like that. So come with us and follow along.
See, you can put money on it, even money box, and you can decorate it with stickers. You can make it personalized just to you. You can even put your name on it as well. So why are we making a money box? Well, we're looking at money and learning about money. But the Word of God, the Bible, tells us that it's God that gives us the power to make money. He gives us the strength and the ideas to create so that we can work and we can make money of our own. And so when God gives us money, He wants us to be responsible with it. He wants us to do wise things with our money. So some of our money, we can actually give to God by putting it in an envelope like we have here at church. It's our way of giving to God when we put an envelope in the offering, in the sanctuary, when we come to church. And some of our money we can put inside our wallet and we can use it to spend and buy things. And some of our money we can save and that way we can buy something special that maybe God really wants us to have or we can save it up to give it to God's church and his kingdom so we can open up more churches all around the world so more and more people can learn about Jesus. So the Lord is able to give you money. What will you do with it? Well, you can ask God to give you wisdom so that you know how to use your money wisely. And so God will be proud of you. Okay, kids, until next time. Bye. kids isn't god amazing he gave to us so now we can give back to him all to jesus i surrender all to him i freely give i will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior Here, where is everybody? Seems like I'm all alone. Well, what's this? It's a scroll. Hey kids, let's look inside and see what it says. Matthew, tell us what the Lord said next. Yes, please. Ladies, what are your thoughts about money? Did someone say money? Ah, oh, supernatural visitation. Listen to me closely. I will tell what the Lord said. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth where moths and worms will destroy, where thieves can break in and steal. Rather, store up for yourself the treasures in heaven, where worms and moths cannot destroy, and also thieves cannot break in and steal. This is the most interesting part. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Matthew, that is amazing. Our Lord is so wise. Mm. Come, let's go tell the rest of the disciples. Yes, let's yes. go. So Jesus doesn't want me to have money while I'm alive? No, dear disciple. I'm supposed to store my money in a safe in the sky? Treasures in heaven? Oh, not even close. Uh, I'm supposed to buy a lizard to eat all the worms and moss? <sighs> Father, 
Help this young one. Your father's up there? Listen, what do you love the most? God or treasure? I see what type of person you become when you love money more than God. Mm -hmm. So God, I love God. If you love God, everything, all your efforts, everything you have, your treasures are all things that you can give it to Him. Wow, that's kind of a lot to ask. Not if you are fully in love with God. If God has your heart, everything else also can be His. Jesus is saying, go ahead and live your life, work hard and make your money. Yes, Jesus wants me to make money. But don't only think about you when you are making money. In everything you do, put God first. So Jesus doesn't want me to use money on myself? Yes, think about it. Whatever you buy on this earth, one day will go away. Even for yourself, you won't be here. Wow, that's cool. Look at this. We have heaven to look forward to. Whatever time that we live on this earth, we build the kingdom of God, which makes God happy. My money makes God happy? He would be happy if you make money, be rich and wealthy. But what makes God more happier is that you put in all your effort and hard work to build His kingdom, preach the gospel, build churches, and touch people for His glory. Using my money? Uh, yes. Uh, it's one way to build the kingdom of God by bringing in your money and to build the kingdom of God. Money is your treasure and if your treasure is with God, that's where your heart will also be. Oh, I get it. If I use my money on God things, that shows God that I love Him. Absolutely. You got it, my young disciple. So that means I don't need to buy a lizard? Oh, my father. Oh, I understand. It's good to give to God with joy, and He will take care of my needs. Hello, whoever is reading it. It's me, Paul the Apostle Paul, the number one letter writer of the whole Bible. <laughs> I know I'm gonna be a pretty big name one day, so if you found this scroll, you're in for something special, because God doesn't make mistakes. Now, I hear a lot of people around here complaining about money. Oh, how much should I give? What should I give? Oh my goodness gracious, hello, you gotta be in tune with the Spirit of God. And where the Spirit of God is, you gotta be happy. So God loves a cheerful giver. If you sow a little bit, you're gonna reap a little bit. If you sow a lot, you're gonna reap a lot. That's just the way God works. That's the way that God made the world. And God loves it when you are joyful, when you do give. Don't do it begrudgingly or it's because someone else told you that you should. Do it because you really want to. That's the first point. And the second point, I just gotta brag. My children, they make sure I never lack anything. They always give me such generous gifts. And I tell them, may the Lord bless you abundantly because my God, who's super mega rich, is gonna reward you for giving unto me because I am building the kingdom of God. So by giving to me, they're giving to God's kingdom. And God, he's a debtor to no man. He will make sure you get your money back and double and double and more and more and more because that's how generous my God is. So if you need to take away anything from this, give joyfully unto the kingdom of God and watch. God's gonna outdo himself. <laughs> Until next time, bye. Hey Naomi, uh, did Jordan come back yet? I sent him on an adventure to learn about money. Hopefully now he doesn't wanna take some of yours. Well, I don't know, but I learned about tithing, offerings, and what to do with my money when I have it. Mm, that's amazing. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Welcome back, Jordan. We're not that part of the episode yet. Oh? Jordan, do you have something to say to Naomi? Yeah, Naomi, I've learned that loving money more than God can make you grumpy. And the best way to use your money is helping out the kingdom. Hmm. That's nice. And? And I'm sorry for being annoying and demanding for money. Okay, now that we know more about money, we know how to use it properly. That's good. I'm glad you guys made up. Let's pray. 
Dear Lord, we thank you for all the children and families all around the world that are tuning in. Lord, we know it is your will that they prosper and that they be wealthy. Father, I pray that you would bless them, bless their hands and everything that they do. May they do it unto you and everything they have, Lord, that you've given them. May they use it to give back to you and to be a blessing to those around them. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now can I say it? Yes. Like, share and subscribe. Okay, bye, bye. kids. Bye.